Hey, are you looking to invest in real estate through your IRA or your 401k? I get it because investing in real estate through a retirement plan can be a powerful way to build wealth. But if you don't structure it correctly, you could be leaving yourself exposed to unnecessary risk and taxes. So the key to maximizing both protections and profits lies in how you set up your investments within your retirement accounts. That's why in this video, what I'm going to guide you through are the best practices for structuring your real estate in your retirement plan. We're going to talk about how to ensure your assets are protected from potential lawsuits, how to optimize your structure for tax efficiency, and the specific steps you need to take to get it right. So whether you're just getting started to add real estate to your retirement portfolio, or you're looking to refine your strategy, the insights I'm going to be sharing with you will help you safeguard your investments and maximize your returns. All right. Let's dive in. Okay, so if you want to put your retirement assets into real estate, the first thing you're going to need to do is get those retirement accounts moved into an account that actually allows you to invest in real estate. So what that means is you're, if you have an IRA, you're going to have to set up a self-directed IRA. Or if you have a 401k with a previous employer and money's just sitting there and you want to put that into real estate, then you're going to have to roll those funds out of that 401k plan into an IRA and then transfer them into a self-directed IRA. Or you could set up a solo 401k yourself off a business entity you may have or one you create, which will give you even more options when it comes to investing in real estate and cut down on your taxes. And I'm gonna show you that right now. So what do I mean? So if you wanna get started investing in real estate, as I stated, you gotta have an account that allows it. And that's why a self-directed IRA, what you're working with there is a custodian that actually permits you to direct your investments as long as it does not amount to a prohibited investment, such as buying a strip club or uh, investing in alcohol or, or, or drugs. So as long as you're not doing that, you're good to go. And there's a few other things in there as well that you can't do. So that's what a self-directed IRA is, how they're set up. The custodians say, listen, your money, you can choose to invest it any way you like. And so what happens in that scenario is you'll typically start with a traditional IRA, and you'll set up your self-directed IRA right here, and you'll roll the funds into this account. So once you get the funds structured into this account, then you can then direct how those funds are going to be used, meaning you could invest in the stock market if you wanted to, you could do hard money loans, or you could, in my case, as we're talking about here, is invest into real estate. Now, if you're going to use your funds to invest into real estate, then you do not want to make this critical mistake that I've seen happen time and time again with real estate investors. And this mistake is based upon the fact that you've heard, or people have heard this, that IRAs offer asset protection. Okay, so is that true? Well, it depends, all right? When we talk about asset protection, what type of protection are you referring to? Are you referring to this type of asset protection that if somebody sues you, they can't take your IRA? If the answer to that is yes, then you're mostly correct. That is, depending on the state in which you live, you may not have full asset protection for your IRA. So for example, take Texas, for instance. If I was a resident of Texas and I set up a self-directed IRA there and I had uh, $500,000 inside of my IRA and I was involved in a car accident and I was sued, well, my creditor could not get after my IRA. Now, if I was in California, well, that's up to the California courts to decide whether or not they'll allow the creditor to take your IRA. So it does depend on where you're living when the lawsuit occurs. But generally speaking, that's what we refer to with asset protection. That is outside, in, meaning they sue you on the outside, they can't get to the inside of your IRA. Now, because of this misconception that there's asset protection here, people feel safe in buying real estate in their IRA, and this is the mistake that they make. And when it comes to buying real estate with their self-directed IRA, what they tend to do many times is they buy the property directly in the IRA as follows. So in my example, maybe I end up acquiring three properties and I'm still setting on 200K uh, inside of my IRA. Now, if you did this and anything were to happen on any one of these properties, your tenant's injured or a guest of the tenant is injured on the property, then they're gonna sue the IRA. We've had clients here at Anderson whose IRAs have been sued because they did not follow this advice. We recommended that they structure their assets differently, like I'm going to show you. Instead, they bought them directly in the IRA, lawsuit developed, and now all of the assets of the IRA are at risk. So 
What we need to do then, if we want to invest in real estate with our IRA, is we want to ensure that we're structuring it so we're using LLCs to hold the real estate. So you never take title to property directly in your IRA. You're going to own an LLC. You're going to own 100% of the LLC right here that holds title to the property. So by doing this, we're following the same type of planning we do with the residential real estate we own in our own name, and we're getting that same type of protection. So if something were to happen on this LLC right here, then it's this LLC that takes the hit. Your IRA, the 200K you still have in there is protected, so is the other real estate. And when you set up these LLCs, they're structured uh, with the IRA as the 100% member, okay, is going to be the IRA, and then you can be the actual manager of your LLC. So you can handle, you know, collect the rents to the LLC, and then you can distribute the funds back down to your IRA. Now, this is a great strategy for people who want to tap into their retirement plans, and they want to put them into real estate or alternative types of investment. However, there is a catch here. And I, when I talked in the opening, I discussed the taxes. And so yeah, understand this, that when you're making these types of investments with a self-directed IRA and you and you structured this as I've just shown you, with IRAs, if you have any debt on the asset itself, then that creates a tax liability for your IRA. And that tax liability starts at about $13,000 at 37%. You're gonna be taxed on the income below that, but it really jumps up at a very low amount. So what that means is that when you're using leverage, because you can use leverage, and there's a great thing about leverage, it allows you to buy more. So if I had $200,000 in my IRA and I'm buying houses at $150,000 a piece, I can only buy one if I'm not using leverage. But if I find someone who's willing to loan me 50 cents on the dollar uh, for these investments, well, now I have greater opportunities. I can go out there and I can buy two properties. Maybe I can get them to go up to 70%. So now I can buy three properties because I'm using debt to put these deals together. But the hesitation for a lot of investors is that if I use debt, then I have to pay tax on that debt finance portion. Now, I'm not going to go into the details on that, but it is a real concern for individual investors that use this strategy. The second issue that comes up here with using self-directed IRAs in real estate in general is what we call prohibitive transactions. I'm just gonna put PT down here. And what that means is that if you screw this up somehow, you do something that the IRS deems to be prohibited, then you run the risk that you disqualify your IRA. So it's kind of like, hey, you screw it up once, they burn the whole entire field. They sh shut everything down on you. And that means all these assets get distributed down to you. And you have a lot of penalties and taxes associated with that one transaction, prohibited transaction, such as maybe they determine that the amount of activity you spent on these properties went to a level that constitutes the addition of services to the investment, such as you went out there and you replaced a toilet and the IRS discovered it when they audited you, prohibited transaction, boom, you just burned it. And I, when I say burn it, you burn everything. So for those of you that are concerned about prohibited transactions or you're concerned about the taxation on leveraged investments, you have another option. And that option is then instead of setting up a self-directed IRA, it's to set up what we call a solo 401k. Now, solo 401k, you know what that is. You probably participate in one right now. But the nice thing about a solo 401k that you create is you can take your IRAs. So if maybe you and your spouse each have your own separate IRA, you can roll both of your IRAs. Traditional, by the way, you can't do this with Roth. You can roll both of your IRAs into this one solo 401k plan. So I bring in 200,000. My wife brings in 250. So now rather than limiting our investments to just 200K in my previous example, now we have 450 to invest with. Now here's where it gets a little interesting that and this is why I like solo 401ks. So we follow the same strategy. We're going to use LLCs to hold our investments, right? And the LLCs will be owned 100% by our solo 401k. But the difference now is with the solo 401k, if I want to use leverage and I want to go out there and get loans uh, uh, to, to buy this property, well, the solo 401k, there's no tax on the debt. So I can leverage up as much as I want, and I will not incur a tax liability like you do with the IRA. So that's one main benefit. 
The second benefit is that when I have this property right here, let's assume, again, I go out, I replace the toilet and they find out about it, meaning the IRS has audited me and this is discovered on the audit. Well, unlike the IRA where they're gonna burn everything down, with a solo 401k, you're gonna have a penalty. Okay, on this asset right here on the income that's generating. So you're gonna pay a small tax. It's gonna be a slap on the wrist, okay, fine. But it's not an execution like what happens with an IRA. Here, it's just a slap on the wrist. So if you're one of those that's a hands-on landlord and you're working a lot with your properties and you do, or you, you screw up one or two times, the, the ramifications are not as dire as you have with the self-directed IRA. So if you're not having your properties professionally managed, I think the safer route to go is always to set up a solo 401k. If you're doing, using a professional management company, the self-directed IRA, if debt's not a problem for you, granted, that's gonna work. Now, the other benefit here uh, that comes from having a solo 401k is the ability to borrow. So if you think that you may wanna tap into your retirement funds to use them outside of your retirement plan for investing purposes, know this, that if you take your IRAs and you roll them into the solo 401k, you could borrow, in my example, $50,000 each out of your plan. You have to repay it over five years, but that's access to funds that you wouldn't necessarily have if you had a self-directed IRA set up. So you have two options when it comes to retirement planning on how to structure it. And it's either a self-directed IRA or a solo 401k. We use both here. We recommend uh, both for our clients, depending on their individual situation. And if you would like us to help you decide what is best for you, there's a link in the show notes to set up a free strategy session with someone here at Anderson. And we can go through uh, your plan and show you how the numbers work out and what would make the most sense if you're looking to take advantage of using your retirement assets to put them into rental real estate. Take care.